In this last video, we're going to look at a number of different statistical tests that can be done to look at the differences in means uh, or to perform uh, an ANOVA and to do comparisons between means of uh, multiple different factor levels. Um, now, the first thing we have to do, for instance, uh, when we're looking at a t-test is we would like to restrict the data, probably the simplest thing to do, restrict the data um, to the two classes that we want. Uh, we want to compare, for instance, the mean uh, length of the unsieved mixture versus the sieved mixture. So how do we do that? Well, first, let's pull out only the data that is in those two classes. So we'll call this T data, T test data, or T data. I'll use the backward arrow. And what's that? That's data, and the subsetting that we're going to use is that the treatment is either mix unsieved or mix sieved. So we say data and use the arrow, uh, the dollar sign treatment, and now we can either say uh, equal to or in. Now in is probably the best way to do it here, and um, because we have otherwise a, a problem with uh, with multiple arguments. Usually the equal to would be fine if we were looking at a single match, but we want to do it multiple matches, so we use in. Now in means uh, it's sort of a like a, a set operation is an element of. So, um, and we enclose the word in with these little percentage signs. Um, what do we want to look for it in? Well, we use C to concatenate, and we're looking at either mix unsieved, so mix underscore unsieved. I'm not able to hit tab there, that was the caps lock mix unsieved comma or mix saved. Now, let's first of all see what this part is doing, whether this is doing the correct thing. So I'm asking to, to, to which of the treatments are either mix unsieved or mix saved. So again, we'll get a vector of trues and falses. If we highlight this whole bit, we'll see now we indeed have the data with both the mix saved and the mix unsaved. Well, that's fine. That's exactly what we wanted. We're calling that the t-data for the t-test. There is one slight issue with that. Now, in R, we have what's no, what are known as uh, factors. That's a particular type of, of data. So it could be numeric, it can be character, but a factor is another type. And that's because R assumes that you want to be doing some statistical tests, and oftentimes you'll have uh, a factor in your in your model, in your linear model. Um, so if we look at the column treatment in our T data subset, uh, it'll give us all the values, mix saved, mix unsaved. And at the end it tells us what are the levels of that factor. And you'll notice here that it still has the levels that it inherited from the parent, the data. Uh, so the, the full data set. Um, and we can also see that if we just type levels, so if we pull out the levels of that column, then it'll turn these uh, values here into a string of six uh, character strings, actually. So a, a vector of six character strings. I don't want to be too technical about these things, but, but it's good for you to know this is how factors are treated in R. Um, now, we, we want to get rid of those uh, other names here. We don't want to Apex and Guy and Gunhild. So we use what's called drop levels, a very useful little function, and we drop levels on T data. So it's the drop levels function says, uh, have a look in there, and if there's any levels that of a factor that are not being used, so that are empty now, uh, get rid of them, drop them. And we'll overwrite T data with the drop leveled version. Let's do that and let's go back up. Now let's check what the levels are. And now you can see the levels are the two that we, we have and not the rest. So there's no ghost levels left in this uh, t-test data set. Okay, that's fine. Now we want to do a t-test. So in R, the function we use is the t.test function. We can hit the tab key to see the arguments. So the first argument is a non-empty vector, numeric vector of data values. Well, that's fine, 
but uh, we're actually we would like to specify um, yeah a test between these two different uh, cultivars and a quite a, a convenient way to do that is to use a formula instead of uh, a particular vector of data values so the formula that we're going to provide is that the length underscore millimeters is predicted by and we need the the tilde the little uh, curly dash predicted by the treatment so the treatment here being either uh, the mix sieved or the mix unsieved so this is our formula um, we tell it that the data we're in is the t data data set and now the final thing is whether it's a one-sided test or a two-sided test. Um, well, in this case, it's a one-sided test because we have an idea, we have a hypothesis, in fact, that by sieving out the small seeds, we will be left with larger seeds leading to larger, healthier, more robust plants. Maybe that's our hypothesis. So we've got a particular, uh, it's, it's a one-sided test, and it's either less than or greater than, well, I think in this case, we we'll look at less than and that is because um, yeah okay, well I'm not actually sure which it should be here I'm just going to guess that it's less than and I can see if that's incorrect later so now it'll give us then the t-test so the data it gives us the t-statistic uh, number of degrees of freedom which is an approximation here, and the p-value from that test. And the alternative hypothesis here, it also says it in words, that the, the difference in means is less than zero, um, because I said less than as the alternative. Um, and here are the sample estimates, so the means of the two groups. So the sieved um, had a length of 430 on average, and the unsieved, which had the smaller seeds in it, had a length, a mean length of 426. Um, now we might, yeah, I think that's it. We can also capture the output there if we, if we wrote in uh, t-test1 maybe and captured it, we can then pull out the p-value of that if you just wanted to uh, to manipulate that value, for instance, or use it somewhere else. You might want it for plotting or so on. That's a way that you can then uh, pull out that particular p-value. Okay, that's the first thing. Um, I'll leave you, have a look at the questions, but that's at least how you would go about um, doing a t-test. Next, we want to do an ANOVA between the variety means. So this is the pure line varieties, the not the mixtures. So now let's copy this bit here, down here, and instead of T data, we'll call it ANOV data. This is our ANOVA data. Now, we had here before the code saying that our treatment is in mix unsieved and mix sieved. If I put an exclamation mark there, it means that the treatment is not, this is the, the not symbol, and I, for this particular command I have to put it right at the start here, so it's the logical inverse of that. So it's not in mix saved and mix unsaved. So that'll actually pull out all the four varieties for us straight away. Let's just have a look. Is that true? Yes. So we've got here Guy, Gunhild, Vada, Apex, but you don't anywhere see the mix uh, values. So, so I've now made a subset of the data which has just the pure line varieties, but not the mixture of the varieties. And again, there's going to be an issue with extra levels which are not gone. So an of data is drop levels and of data. And we can look at well a levels just to convince ourselves. And indeed, there are just four levels of that a factor. That's exactly what we wanted. Now in order to do an ANOVA in OR, we use the AOV function analysis of variance. We could also do an LM, but it's probably more correct technically to use the AOV function here. And again, our, our formula is similar to what we had before. So the length, we can copy this little bit of, uh, I don't like typing very much, so we can copy this formula here. The length 
is determined by the treatment. Again, the treatment is the variety. Now the data is an uh, of data. Um, and we want to capture that output uh, using this. Now this is a simple model in which we are only considering the treatment, but we may also want to add student groups. Maybe we think that might, uh, there might have been differences between the student groups. And have I got it correct here? I'm not quite sure. Call names of data, just to be sure. No, okay, it's group without the S. Let me take out that S. So that's an option for you to include the student group or not. You can maybe even do both and see uh, what difference does it make. For now, I'll just leave it out and I'll leave it up to you to run both of them. Okay, and if we want to see the ANOVA table, we would get the summary of that AOV1. And here now we have uh, evidence to suggest that, that yes, there's a very uh, significant effect of cultivar on that. And if we added, suppose we had the student group in there, added that in, of course I could have called it AOV2. Okay, indeed, student group also seems to predict um, the mean length of the plants as well. So actually it seems that there was possibly some difference between how the groups were scoring here. Um, I would like to also check the assumptions of that uh, linear model. We can do that using the plot function, for instance. And here it says hit return. So I come down here. There is a little bit of, uh, yeah, a bit of a uh, difference in the variances. So the constant variance is, it's, it's fairly good. It's not so bad, but there's a small bit of an indication here that higher values uh, are also associated with higher variances. That's not quite what we assume when we're running a linear model. Uh, the residuals look uh, very good. So this is the QQ plot of the residuals, and they're more or less in line with what we would expect for normally uh, normally distributed residuals. Uh, I'm not too worried about the leverages and so on. Uh, I just wanted to check here. Constant variance and normality of residuals. That's fine. And the last thing that we were going to do is to compare the means between uh, all these different cultivars. Now for that there's a very useful function but it's not in base or so you have to install a separate package called the agricole. So install packages agricole. Now I think I already have this installed but I'll just run it again here. You'll see the little stop sign so or is running away. It's um, contacting the CRAN repository and it's downloaded already somewhere for me. That's fine. To bring it into the session here I need to type library agricole and that makes all the functions of agricole available to me now. Now next time you run it you don't have to keep installing this every single time. That doesn't have to be done every single time so I'll just comment that particular line out and then uh, the function in agricole that we need here is the LSD test function. And it's very convenient. We can run an LSD test on this AOV object, the output of the AOV function. And we just have to tell it which particular treatment, which particular um, experimental factor are we interested in uh, looking for differences between the means. So what's the grouping factor? It's treatment and let's capture the output of that called LSD1 backward arrow control enter now we have something called LSD1 what is LSD1 let's have a look well there's a it's a list with different uh, elements in it it gives us for instance statistics so it shows us what the least significant difference between the means is um, gives us the means of the different uh, varieties here and this is the, the very useful one, so we can just pull out that by saying LSD1 dollar sign groups. And here we have a nice little table with the mean lengths of each of the different varieties. And then it'll show you, um, well, whether they're uh, significantly different or not according to this test. So in this uh, example, indeed, there are major differences between the means mean length of all the different varieties. And that's given by the fact that each of these has a different 
symbol, so A, B, C, D. If they were the same, or at least if there was no difference, significant difference between, for instance, Vada and Apex, then we would he have here A, A, and then maybe B, C. But because they're all distinct, it does uh, show us at least that uh, according to Fisher's LSD test, uh, there is evidence that the means here are different. And this takes into account multiple comparisons. So rather than doing a t-test between these pair and this pair and this pair and all those different tests, it automatically corrects for all those multiple comparisons. Okay, that's all I wanted to show you in this last clip.